Hey everyone, it's getting a bit late here, but um, I want to do a quick video on Sanva MT5 configuration uh, that I use now for racing. I've been raced a couple of times. We have a couple of things though beforehand. One, uh, we have the mid motor chassis for the T4. So let me know if you've used this before and do you think I should upgrade to this. Uh, second, we have the Tamiya working now fully. Uh, the motor is installed, so I'm planning to run this hopefully maybe on the two races uh, we'll see on this Friday. Uh, second thing, second, we're still working on this body shell. Or third thing, third, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. Uh, we have this new body shell that we have to paint. I've just put the decals on so we can get it working for the Friday. Now, on to the sandbar. Okay, welcome all, welcome, welcome, welcome. So you've seen it from the introduction, I've got so many projects going on, I think almost too much. But let's get going with this and I'll um, aim to show you um, all the settings that I've updated so far because I've been learning with this one for quite a bit. Uh, I've added this on as well, but not that I have anything else for it. So this is the remote as it looks like. I'll just keep it here and we'll go through some of the settings now and show you what I've been using. I have a manual right next to me so I can just remind myself on some of the uh, settings and what I'm planning to do next. But we'll go through the basics as it is set up at the moment and then um, I'll give you some couple of uh, uh, tips and tricks towards the end on how to make this remote as efficient as possible so when we enter the menu we'll go to the settings right away as you can see on the dual rates for the steering i have that set up to normal at the moment although i've generally been playing around using it between um uh, 85 percent which does seem to make steering uh, a lot better uh, when it comes to their peak uh, because um, if we have a look at the manual here um, you can adjust the rudder angle when operating the steering wheel so that's what it's all setting it up to operate to their peak and it's um it's a very useful setting for me in simple words it looks like it slows everything down a little bit so i certainly recommend playing around with that of course don't go crazy just going to five percent um, differences or just reduce it down to 95 try that see how it looks like if you can't feel the change go down to 90 percent 85 and so on so that will be what i'll be doing uh next for this one i haven't slowed my um servo too much so on the speed uh, from the steering you if you press the select button you have a couple of options here so the main ones are the throttle of course and the steering which is the first one so i haven't slowed the servo too much because i've been using the curve uh, to play with the other settings that I have. However, the recommended settings on the speed um, is to put it down to like 15%, maybe try that and then see how it goes. Uh, and from there on, you know, if you feel the steering is not really responsive, you can adjust it up or down as you feel the need. For now, I'll just leave that on zero because um, I don't feel like I am. Um, I need this especially when we go to the next settings and we see what I've done here. So what we have here is a setting called curve and I'll just go into the curve here on the menu. So this is a function of making the operation volume of servo variable with the respect of the operation of the steering. So basically the further we move the steering wheel here, it's uh, how it's affected on the curve. And from what you can see here, I'm using the arc <coughs> to adjust this, uh, the normal setting, of course, would be zero, 0, and this line would be going from 0 uh, all the way up here for the right uh, side. But as you can see, I've, uh, what I've done here, I've set that prior to 40% of the steering, the, serve, the, the speed of the steering will be slowed down by 25%. And what I found that this really helps me with when I'm on the straights um, and um, also on the um, curved turns that are not so sharp, let's say. So it's really helping to make a difference there uh, in terms of um, not losing control on the straight 
so it just allows you to fine tune those settings. You can see I'm just moving the steering wheel quite a bit, I feel like, before it even gets to the 4%, uh, 40% and this makes a very small change on the rate. Uh, the recommended setting for this one, from what I was reading, uh, you can adjust the position also in the exponential here, what we can see. So this will just set the overall rate. So if I adjust this line here to, I don't know, let's go see what the furthest one is, minus one, 100 you can see how the steering will work then. And what this will do, this will, um, uh, based on the manual again, which I can show you here, I guess, based on the manual, what we have, so we've done just like this, and this will uh, produce mild steering. So you can set it up minus one to minus 100. Um, and that's, that's the line that we have right now. Um, there is no recommendation here, but there's no there's no harm really in playing with this and trying out different settings. I really want to stick within Arc for now. <laughs> I'll have to change the rate because well, if we had this at hundred, it would basically mean that here it wouldn't do anything, and all of a sudden it would turn here from forty percent onwards. It would have a full steering line, but that's not what we want to have. So we want to have a little bit of steering uh, prior to the 40% here. So we want to have a little bit of steering to do those. Um, um, uh, sorry, I lost the track of thought uh, to uh, to make those turns still. But uh, we do want it to be very responsive the further we uh, turn the steering wheel as well. So that's how I have it at the moment. Uh, I like to have it 25%. That's something that I'm testing at the moment. And each heat, each race that I do, I try and change it ever so slightly and then, of course, see what kind of difference it makes. Likewise, you can do the same here on the exponential. Um, so I've not played around with this too much because most of it, it's actually set on my ESC. And I had that set up by one of the pro drivers. Uh, for the um, one of the teams so I didn't want to play with that it's already set within the key one that I have here is the steering for which my servo is not configurable uh, so I have to control it from the uh, transmitter itself uh, when we go to the uh, FS or as they call it here what do they call it now I forgot uh, so this is the fail safe. Uh, I don't have this setting. There's a couple of options available here to move it to percentage. As you can see here, I'll just put the page down and you can kind of have a look at it and see what it says there. If you want, you can pause the video and just figure it out. I just leave it to the default. I haven't found this setting to be anything too critical. Um, it's a feature that keeps the servo in a predetermined position, which I don't think is something we need very much for racing. And when we go on to the um, base, uh, again, I've not changed here too much. You can again see the settings here on the manual. I'll just leave it here. I'm not sure why is it beeping at me right now. And did I press this button? Yes, I did. Because uh, I've set up the offset to be able to warm up the diff. So that's something I can show you quickly as well. Uh, so I haven't tried the base. Uh, it seems to be working quite well on my car. It's the same for steering and this. Uh, I don't get any weird locks, any server tension, nothing. So I've just left it basically exactly, exactly as it is. And same with the settings. I'm just quite happy my um, my um, har, uh, car is, uh, you know, pretty straight right off the bat with all the settings that I've done and everything else. So I'll just grab the car and put it there. But uh, you know, I don't have to. I don't have to play with that too much. I don't think I should start the car now because the buzzing noise might be a little bit too loud for you to hear me. Uh, so that's okay. And then as I go to some of the other settings, what I've done uh, on the system, um, the calibration is very important to do. So that's very simple. Every now and again. Uh, every couple of weeks or whenever you travel a lot, just fine tune your calibration settings just like this. The car doesn't even have to be on. It basically establishes the right throttle position. So I could just press the throttle a little bit 
and leave it like that or I could press it what feels like all the way for me and configure it as such which is what I like to have so that's been executed clock of course important to set and the battery here I've changed actually to LiPo 1S this is the one that I use the zombie 3200 battery and this has been an absolute lifesaver <laughs> uh, not having to replace the battery so often so I definitely recommend that on the other hand let me show you a couple of tips and tricks now I just need to grab a stand for that for the car so we'll put the car up to make sure it doesn't start uh, or do anything uh, funny um, so if we go down to the other settings um, just to show you quickly I've assigned the key here uh, on the switch to I have the offset and it's set to toggle on and off and offset can be set up within I think it's a th function here so I'll just set up the type uh, which I just leave it to that which is default and then the point is 49% uh, we'll see now whether that's too fast and then of course you can set the beep so you know that it's on but basically what this setting is used for to warm up your rear diff uh, and this is the switch to the button here that I'm using so let's switch on the car hopefully that's not too loud so as soon as I hit this button here we'll see that the rear wheel is spinning so if you hold this wheel that will warm up the uh, the oil in the differential and make it a lot smoother but um i have to i have a problem with my car at the moment for which it's going to be fixed tomorrow and you can see on the steering here as i turn the full here full there um uh and um yeah i don't have any issues with my servo right now uh, but that's it. Um, on the other hand, let's switch off the car and I'll show you the couple of other settings. So what I have here, uh, when we switch off the remote, if you hold the start button here and switch it on, uh, this will take you to the quick uh, wizard uh, start. I'm not going to go through this just so I don't mess up my car and start all over. But basically, if you follow this menu, it will allow you to set it up uh, correctly for your first use. And then if you hold the select button, so the top button here, sorry, you can't see it, and then switch it on. Uh, that didn't work. Or was it the back button, sorry? And you switch it on. Okay, switch it on. No, uh, it must be this one. Okay. Uh, it's not this one that's for sure I think it's this one but I don't know why within me it won't allow me but basically if you hold select and you power it on you'll be able to select between different models of car uh, so far I only have a, one model here because I only have one receiver so this is the receiver I keep switching between uh, this x-ray and also the um, other one uh, the what is it called the Tamiya uh, but yeah, uh, that's it. I just wanted to show you this quickly. Uh, it's beeping now because again, I've pressed the offset button by accident. So you have to be careful with the offset uh, because I did turn it on on the track once. Um, I thought the car wasn't moving and the car was going around the track on its own, doing a much better job than what I was doing. So uh, just be careful with that one. Do activate that beep so you can hear it. Uh, you can have like an audible warning of what's going on hopefully you've enjoyed this quick uh, video and i'll keep you updated as to how i'm getting on with this and of course um as i learn more about this receiver itself but so far it's been amazing i absolutely love it and i um, uh, can't wait to get on a track on friday and saturday i think this week so thanks all for watching and i'll see you soon